Hey, what is going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So, in this video, we're going to continue our series on 80s graphics right here in After Effects. So, this is what we'll be creating here in, for this tutorial. And, you know, very uh, that very, uh, you know, clean, typical 80s sort of style with the grid. We have some mountains in the background, some sort of, uh, you know, some repeating text animation. And also has some lightning for some extra cool uh, stuff for the background but let's go ahead and dive right into this so we already got a tut here and the first thing we're going to do is go up to layer new solid and we'll call this one grid and let's go to effect generate and let's add the grid effect and everything looks okay here maybe what we can do is change this to the uh, width and height sliders and I'm going to set this to 128 to 128 for the width and height and then let's make this a 3D layer by making this a 3D layer over here. And let's hit R on the keyboard to bring up the rotation. And for the X rotation, let's set this to like negative 88. And let's hit P on our keyboard to bring up the position. And let's just put this in a position where we can kind of see what's going on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to layer solid settings. And let's uh, expand the uh, at least the height of this um of this layer, let's do the width and height. So let's go here and just ex really expand this by a lot. Maybe we'll do the height a little bit more. And you know, if I'm doing like 4,000 by 4,000, that should be okay. And let's go ahead and just reposition this kind of where it should be, and that should be okay. Um, I think we will be good with this position. So uh, maybe what we can do is change the color of this to you know the palette that we want to go with. I'm going to use purple for this. And then let's do ourselves a favor and go up to layer, pre-compose. And we'll call this one uh, grid. So I found this picture of some mountains on uh, Google, and it's very low contrasted. Basically, everything's in the same, I guess, plane right here, and that's good. And it was not hard to find this. I went to Google and just typed in mountains, and I found something that something that worked really well. You can always download this from my uh, project files. Links in the description of this video. But what we're gonna do? Let's go um, uh, go to the pen tool here, and let's kind of just do like a pre mask here. Let's kind of just like you know mask uh, throughout the mountain range here. You know, don't like want to get this in any of the sky, and we'll call this like our foreground mask. Then let's go and maybe duplicate this layer, and uh, let's go ahead and delete the mask. Let's put this one underneath our mask layer, and let's go up to effect keying, and let's use the extract effect, and let's lower the white point, and that will kind of start to cut out the sky by a little bit. And don't have to go by too much. Maybe we'll do like 187. Then let's go grab the pen tool. And let's just kind of cut out rest of the sky here, kind of like this. And we will subtract that. So now we've basically cut out the sky. Um, and let's go and pre-compose both of the mountain layers here together. And we'll call this one mountains. And that'll be OK. And then let's go to effect color correction. And we'll use the tint effect. And then let's go to effect color correction curves. And let's really make this dark. And maybe we'll go to the mount to uh, maybe we'll select the white color here and maybe we'll make this like a little bit darker as well like maybe a medium gray and then let's go and put this underneath our grid layer kind of like that hit p let's go ahead and maybe bring this up maybe kind of like that let's go back into our grid and i forgot to uh set the grid to blending mode to normal and we go back here i can see now we can't see underneath our grid and all looks pretty decent for us and let's go to the map white and let's actually make this maybe like almost black kind of like that. Let's kind of go here and just make it completely dark black like this. And let's go to the curves here. Maybe raise it up like that. I think that'll be easier for us to kind of just manage that if we want to change this down the road. But so far this is looking pretty good. So now we have a few things we can do. All right. And now let's go and uh, go up to layer new solid. And let's call this one sky. And of course let's make sure that's uh, make it comp size for this one. And that'd be fine. And then go up to effect, generate, and we'll use the gradient ramp effect. And let's make the top color, you know, part of our palette, maybe a purple. Maybe we'll make our uh, bottom color here, maybe like a dark blue. And maybe we'll raise this up by a little bit like that. And let's go ahead and put this underneath everything. So now we kind of have a sky going on here. And things are starting to look kind of colorful for us. So let's go ahead and create another uh, layer, solid. And let's go ahead and title this one light lightning. Ah, I can't talk here. So let's go up to effect, generate, advanced lightning and let's just go and position the uh, bottom point here over here and the top point you know kind of like a lightning bolt how it should be and we can put this underneath everything other than the sky layer and we can kind of see what's going on here 
and let's go into the glow settings and let's go and maybe change this to whatever color you want. Maybe I'll do like a hot pink and maybe we can go into the core settings and I can make this a little bit larger, the uh, core radius. And that's pretty interesting. So the thing is, this does not, this is not moving, and, but I think that's okay. I don't really want the lightning to be animating in any way. So really what we'll do is we'll just kind of trim up each of these layers kind of like this. Just kind of drag the end point in and maybe we'll go to like a few seconds uh, down the road or sorry, a few frames down the road and we'll split the layer. So, and maybe we'll just move this one over. So as you can see, it'll kind of come on and go away. And let's uh, move the, the second layer here. Let's kind of move this lightning maybe, you know, over here. Kind of create some variation. As you see, it kind of already animates, so we don't really have to touch any controls here, and we can just continue to split the layer, maybe move it back a little bit. And we can kind of continue this until, you know, we are happy with our effects. So I'll do like one more, and we'll kind of start working on the timing a little bit. So let's see, let's do the last one. You know, maybe like over here, maybe like off the edge here. All right. And let's split the layer. All right, and let's go ahead and maybe work on the timing a little bit for these layers. Just drag them in by a few so they kind of come on like that. And then let's go and duplicate all four of these again, bring them to the top, and we'll go to like right, you know, maybe two seconds, two and a half seconds, and we'll just hit the uh, bracket button on our keyboard here. The uh, I think that's the forward bracket button to bring them all to the playhead here. And let's just go ahead and just drag these out. So now, We'll kind of have that like all in place and we want we can maybe make a few adjustments maybe, maybe we can move you know where some of these lightning bolts are on the screen let me grab like the last one here or this one and you know so far that's looking pretty cool so boom a little bit of lightning and then boom then we have all four of our lightning flashes in the frame here. So let's go and add our text. So text title tool, we'll come here, we'll type in our text. I'll just type in Sunduck. And I'm using the font Prisma. And of course, uh, you guys can check out a ton of fonts on Google. They're free or just Google search them. They're not on Google, but Google search uh, 80s fonts and you'll find a bunch to work with. And uh, let's, since we have their text in here, let's also go and create a new solid. And we'll call this one gradient. Okay, and let's go up to layer, and we'll go to layer styles, and let's add the gradient overlay effect. And let's go ahead and open up the gradient overlay and go to versus colors and click on edit gradient. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of click two little, I guess, uh, markers in here. I guess they're pens, our color stops. And let's go and maybe, you know, mess around for our palette a little bit. Maybe I'll make this one a little bit warmer. So we have an orange color over here, and maybe I'll grab like a yellow color over here. And maybe we'll come here and make these like, the middle one's kind of like a purple, purple pink. And then let's go and maybe drag these two in the center here and drag our two outside ones closer to the middle. So we kind of have like this sort of weird looking colors here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this up. We're gonna bring this gradient underneath our text layer here. And we're gonna go to the track mat and we're gonna set this to alpha mat to our text. So as you see, we create we quickly created a nice little gradient for our text here. And let's go and uh, pre-compose our, you know, our gradient and our text layer here. And we'll call this one our text. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to effect and we're gonna go to perspective and we're gonna add the bevel alpha effect to this. And we can uh, increase the edge thickness as much as we want. You know, I don't wanna do, do too much, but I think that looks just fine. And then let's go to layer and let's go to layer styles and let's add a stroke effect to it. And maybe we can go here, open this up. Maybe we'll set the uh, stroke to like purple. I don't know. Maybe that's a little too much purple for my taste. Maybe we can set, keep it set back at orange. You know, maybe I don't even like that. I'll set it blue. Let's just try the blue text. And maybe we can increase the size by a little bit. And, you know, so far it looks pretty good. And then what we're going to need to do is we'll talk to switch this mode again. And let's make this a 3D layer. Set P in our keyboard for position. Let's go to like, you know, say we want this text to be in here at, you know, right when this lightning strikes like this. So let's say this is the text final position. And let's go to like uh, one and a half seconds. And let's grab, grab the Z position here. And let's just drag this off frame kind of like this right at us. Hold down shift if you want it to go really fast. So boom. 
And then let's make the last keyframe an easy as keyframe by hitting F9 on our keyboard so it'll slow down um, towards the end here. And then once we're done with this, let's go ahead and pre-compose this again. We'll call this one text echo and that'll be fine. And then let's go up to effect time and let's grab the echo effect. And this is really cool because it's gonna start repeating our animation. So let's set the number of echoes to five and the echo operator to maximum. So now if we kind of see our animation here, this will kind of be repeated several times. And if I let this buffer, as you can see, it's pretty good quality too. So, you know, it's kind of how you can do that effect. Of course, you know, mess with the different sort of uh, echo operators. You can get some cool uh, things with it. So something to keep in mind. I'm gonna keep mine just at mask maximum just because it keeps those colors in there, how I like it. And, you know, so far it looks pretty good. So, so let's do a quick little touch up here. So let's take a look at the grid and mountains here and let's <clears throat> take the grid here. Let's grab the rectangle tool and let's just kind of like mask out the, uh, you know, edge here and set this to subtract. And maybe let's go and feather it, feather it just by a little bit. Kind of, so it kind of like fades off in the distance. And I think that looks pretty interesting. And then let's go and go up to layer, new adjustment layer and start adding some of those 80s, you know, grungy effects. So let's go to effects, uh, noise and grain, let's add grain. And I found that the default settings, I really like the default settings. So I just set this to final output. And now we kind of just have some grain going on in here. And then let's go to effect color correction curves. And let's kind of like make this sort of flat since, you know, I think we don't want to have too much dynamic range in here. So what I'm doing is just bringing up the uh, shadow point and the highlight point and kind of just like curving them down a little bit. So things look a little bit flat. And then let's go to effect stylize glow and just kind of punch everything up and make kind of make it look cool and maybe a little bit weird. But let's go and set the th glow threshold to like 80%. So it kind of like lower the intensity of everything. And maybe we can set the uh, radius to like 50 and maybe the glow intensity to two and we'll see what we have. You know, I think that looks really awesome. <laughs> so let's go ahead and create this a little bit camera animation. So let's go up to layer new null object, not gonna use the camera this time. And let's just go ahead and parent everything except for the adjustment layer and the sky to the null object. And let's uh, hit P on our keyboard for position. And let's go to like five seconds here. Let's say this is where the animation is going to stop and let's go to the beginning of our timeline and let's just bring down the Y position by a little bit. So now this will kind of animate on like this. The only issue is, is the lightning. And what I like about the lightning effect is that we can quickly fix this by selecting all of our lightning layers, hit P on our keyboard, and we can kind of just bring this up and it's still pretty much going to hit in that same position that we want it to hit in. So, you know, no trouble at all with this. And then as always, remember to turn on motion blur for everything and render it out so and after a quick render this is what we have and i definitely like it so hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys are new to the channel please subscribe for more after effects videos and drop a like if you found the video helpful and please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks those links in the description of this video and guys as always thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you have a good day